No chips wrapped around the, the tool. Chips are very manageable. In fact, with a uh, little bit larger blast of air, there wouldn't be anything there. Finishes and tolerances are consistent every time. Chip evacuation is no problem. Now you've heard us talking in the past about what we're doing on oil pipe. This will give you an example of an oil pipe. You're going to see it machine on the on the outer diameter to skin it. And this is this material is very stringy material. And an oil pipe can take anywhere between 15 minutes and 25 minutes, depending on the, the diameter. And I'm going to show you what we do here. So typically you come in and take the skin off the pipe and then you come back in and you thread it. So if you can do a pipe in, let's say, two minutes, and you're currently doing it in 15 to 25 minutes, it's like you went out in your plant and you found machinery. So you've got two choices at that point. You can increase the capacity of the oil pipe that you manufacture, meaning you can produce more, or you could reduce the labor or the amount of shifts that you would have to produce the same amount of pipe that you're producing today. So are you the low-cost producer at that point? Yes, absolutely you are. So the very bottleneck that's in your plant, which is threading, all, all of a sudden is not the bottleneck. So the key to using the LACC process is to get these chips in a manageable state and get them away from the point of contact. And this can be done on oil pipe or it can be done on oil pipe couplings. A lot of technology and hard work went into producing this process. And what I'm going to show you here is a, is a typical operation that we did. We removed 50% of the metal here. And the top uh, is with, without the LACC. And obviously this cup of, uh, in this part was filled. And you couldn't go back in and do a second or third operation. And they did this in three operations. What we showed them is that we could use the LACC process and do it with one pass. So what you theoretically have done is you've reduced two banks of machines because you can do it in one, or you could take those three banks of machines and don't, don't run three shifts, run one shift, and run it five days a week instead of seven. So are you the low-cost producer at that point, knowing that cost is made up, a good portion of the cost is made up of labor and capital equipment involved in making that part? Yes, you are. The other thing that we found in our platform is the cost of recycling. Because we, we went back and we looked at the marketing plan for this, you know, where are the benefits for our customers, as any company would do when they're bringing a product forward. One of the benefits that kind of stared us in the face after we got into it was most of these companies, when they, whoever picks up their steel and they are going to recycle it for them, they're going to have to chop it up and they're going to have to clean it. But what they try to do is come back to you and pay you nothing for it. So what I deliver to you, and you can see it in the bottom right-hand corner, is I, I deliver to you a chopped up, clean chip that now becomes a revenue stream. The benefits that we, we discovered, uh, obviously, as we've talked about earlier, and you could see the reduction in capital equipment. The other is reduction in labor because of the automation. We're just having less people making more product. Uh, the coolants can be eliminated. Dry machining. I know some people say, well, we dry machine, but you don't dry machine at these speeds. And reducing the cost per unit, the last uh, check that I checked, uh, the industry, the coolant industry is saying that uh, coolants are 17% of the cost of machining. How'd you like to take that out and change nothing else? It's pretty hard to find a 17% uh, 
decrease in your cost at this day and age with everything that's been tried. Forging, forging cost reductions, utilizing bar stock in the place of expensive forgings. Uh, we're doing experimentation right now with, because of the speed of the machine, of the machining process, taking it from a bar instead of a big expensive forging. Kind of changes the way you think about near net shapes. Safety is greatly improved. Uh, you don't have the long, stringy, sharp chips that are related to uh, all kinds of different injuries to your hands and your arms as you're digging in there trying to, trying to clip these shards away from the, uh, from the tool and out of the pipe or off your part. A reduction in tool clock cost with better chip control. Heat is what wears anything out, whether it be a grinding wheel or a cutting tool or, or anything that is uh, metal to metal. By reducing the heat, by breaking the chip, it allows your, uh, your tool to last longer, doesn't wear out as quick. So that's why we find typically that your uh, number of pieces you get off a carbide insert in many cases can double. Machining downtimes associated with poor chip control. As I mentioned in some of the earlier videos, uh, companies can be down as much as 40-50% of the time. So you could have a uh, four minute cycle time, but if you're down 40 or 50 percent of the time evacuating chips because it won't go through your chip conveyor, then that's that's real time. And at the end of the day, that's real parts that you didn't produce because you were spending time doing things that uh, that weren't what you're all about, and that's producing parts. It gives you the competitive advantage. Less capital equipment, less labor. It's some of the biggest parts of, uh, of a cost per piece. And we reduce that significantly. So if it takes you 10 machines, it's going to take me two. Uh, if I can automate and you can't, then you've got labor involved. I got a payback on a robot that isn't too far before it's, the payback is there. Then if I can uh, automate my gauging systems with various types like Marpaw's gauges, and you have to have a gauging department, boy, I've just cleaned your clock. And the whole idea that we're all looking at nowadays is a better environment. Uh, green machining is, seems to be the buzzword in our industry, but it's real. Um, industry is really trying to, to make a better product, a cleaner product, and a better environment for the workers. We don't have to use coolant. If you want to use coolant, fine, but all you're going to do is have an expensive part cleaner. Our process does not recognize coolants. We've had other companies, that uh, major OEMs, that have verified that and the disposal and the work environment contamination. We basically call it zero waste, zero landfill.